Today on an all-new Dr. Phil. From supermodel to... I truly believe I have schizophrenia. He spends 10 hours a day Googling what could be wrong with his health. You thought you had lung cancer. Then you thought you looked jaundiced. I have a friggin' symptom every day. But is his family... Like a real bad hypochondriac. We know you more than any. More than any. Okay, but how does that rule out me being schizophrenic? Because you're not. Making matters worse. It's like a drug addict getting a fix. Stop doing it. Today is going to be a changing day in your life. You've never had anybody working harder to bring you to the threshold of change than right now. Today's guest lived the big life as a successful fashion model. Blake has traveled the world and modeled for brands such as Gucci, Armani, but he works as a waiter by day and spends every second of his free time Googling illnesses and disorders. He believes he has schizophrenia, leukemia, anxiety, OCD, psychosis, the list just goes on and on. Now, his mom, Kim, recently reached out to me to try and figure out the mystery behind Blake going from top model to possibly debilitatingly mentally ill. My 30-year-old son, Blake, has been on a horrible mental roller coaster for the last two and a half years. And now his mind is currently ruining his modeling career. I always have a symptom every single day. I have a friggin' symptom every day. I know, Blake. You can brainwash yourself. Blake has seen several mental professionals. He will not accept the diagnosis of OCD, general anxiety disorder, and depersonalization disorder. How can anxiety or OCD be like this debilitating? I feel like you guys are maybe missing red flags. Honey, you haven't done anything different to change things. Don't you think I want to though? Right now, he truly believes that he is developing schizophrenia. When this first started, Blake would reach out to doctors online. And if he didn't hear what he wanted to hear, he started making appointments with other doctors. Blake will spend hours every day researching illnesses. I Google all these disorders and I can take at least one or two symptoms from maybe all of them, each Blake, of them. I can take a symptom from how I feel sometimes and think it's cancer or something. He will watch videos on schizophrenia, depersonalization disorder. He is always trying to convince me that he has all these illnesses. He's thought he's had leukemia, lymphoma, and just the other day, he told me he thinks he's bipolar. Blake wipes me out with his false beliefs. It really makes me frustrated. I feel like I have to be there for him 24-7. I try not to enable Blake, but I feel like I have to reassure him everything's okay. If I'm not getting reassurance, that's when I'm having a nervous breakdown. I'm getting older. I've got to take care of my health. I know, and you don't think that you kills know, you me? You already like... lost your dad. Blake was 12 years old when his father passed away. Blake was always scared of dying. After his dad died, it escalated. If this doesn't change for Blake, I just see the same vicious cycle. I feel like it will be Groundhog's Day every single day. Well, Kim says even though she's constantly reassuring Blake that he's 100% healthy, he refuses to believe her. So here's what he has to say. I can't accept that I don't have schizophrenia right now. I think there's red flags being missed by my family members and my doctors. I spend 10 hours a day researching schizophrenia, bipolar, because I genuinely think I have it. My obsessions completely change me as a person. I feel robotic almost. I feel like I'm most at calm when I'm researching, watching the same videos to try to comfort me. My diagnosis with anxiety, OCD, and depersonalization disorders is making my life a living hell. I 100% think I would be a lot further in my modeling career if it wasn't for this. My issues really magnified a few years ago when I came across a lump on my groin. I was totally convinced I had lymphoma. The other day you were sick, you had a cough, you thought you had lung cancer. Yeah, is that not true? I did. Yeah, I and then you thought you looked jaundice my anxiety attacks present themselves i just break down crying for like 20 minutes it's the worst feeling in the world i just feel like my life's almost over 
I was having lunch with my mom, and I thought I heard like the fastest, quietest little whisper say my name in my head. I instantly thought I had schizophrenia. I have a lot of guilt in me because of this. Then bring it in one day. I don't want you to feel guilty. I just want you to get help and be joyful again. No one could really understand what I'm going through because they're not going through it. My agency in New York is pushing me to get over there, but I am scared to go. What if I have a psychotic episode? My biggest fear is I will truly be diagnosed with schizophrenia, all my dreams will be shattered, and I will end up in a mental hospital for the rest of my life. Okay, it's good to meet you. You too, Dr. Phil. How you feel about being here? Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I'm anxious. I have thoughts that you're gonna see me and think I'm psychotic, and you're gonna, I just fear the worst every time I see a mental health expert. And yeah. What do you think's going on here? He's a hypochondriac. It started when he was younger, but it has just escalated in the last two and a half years. Mm -hmm. And um, I really feel like he's brainwashed himself from researching 24 seven. He falls asleep to videos on every mental health I issue have, there is. I have so many weird symptoms though. So how's that being a hypochondriac when I'm feeling these symptoms? That's what I feel like you guys don't understand. We do well, no, whoa, whoa, whoa. If you spend so much time with Dr. Google, if if he's your best friend, then you've had to look up hypochondria, right? Mm -hmm. So she's exactly describing mm -hmm. what you're saying. So why are you arguing that? I just feel like being a hypochondriac can't cause the symptoms that I'm experiencing. Because so you're experiencing them. You don't. You have no objective data that you have them. You're just experiencing yeah. them. Well, here's the here are the things you say you that you fear having. You fear you have uh, lung cancer, bipolar, schizophrenia, brain tumor liver disease, heart disease, thyroid cancer. And a lot of those will be just like, I'll fare it for a day and then it will kind of just go away. But the one that's just lingering on, I just truly believe I have is schizophrenia. I pretty much think I'm early stage in that mm -hmm. my psychotic episode hasn't hit yet. Okay. That's what I'm convinced. Okay. Visual hallucinations, auditory hallucinations? There was... There was one time I you was, heard your name once. Yeah, I thought I heard my name in my head once with a yeah. little whisper. Other than that, I haven't heard that since then. Yeah, boy, if you heard the <laughs> I hear in my head, you'd really think. <laughs> That's what I've told him. This morning he woke up and said he now thinks he has bipolar because he woke yeah. up irritable. Bipolar one or two? Uh, I'd probably say two. Yeah, so you don't get wildly manic, just sort of manic. I mean. I don't even know if I get manic. You but. don't. Well, how can you have bipolar too? Because I read, you know, they could feel irritable, and sometimes I'll, I'll like wake up and like I'll just be feeling well, really no, you, irritable. You can't be a lazy hypochondriac. If you if you think you have a disorder, you got to really study up on it yeah. so you know what you're supposed to have. Blake's twin brother Chad says he's sick and tired of everything revolving around Blake and his obsessive thoughts of being mentally ill. We'll meet him next. completely normal around other people. He's able to go to work every day as a server. His modeling agents love him. His managers love him. Everyone loves him. It's like he hides his schizophrenia thing at work, but then it all comes at home. We're your family. We know you more than anyone. More than I, anyone. Okay, but how does that rule out me being schizophrenic then? Because you're not. And later, I've been doing this for 45 years. I've worked with a lot of schizophrenics. I've seen some of your videos. And ain't none of them as miserable as you are. <laughs> My twin brother Chad and I were always very close growing up. I feel like in the past two and a half years, Chad has definitely isolated himself from me. I feel like he sees what he's doing to me. It makes me feel angry. We used to go out all the time, but now I just think he's annoyed with me. I'm always gonna care about you. You're always gonna be my twin. Are we gonna be best friends? Probably not. It's not how it, it used to be. I'll see him going out and I want to be there. <laughs> I love my brother, but I want him to understand what I'm going through is debilitating and I'm doing my best. It definitely hurts me that my brother does not want to be around me. He's been my best friend my whole life. Kim says that her son Blake is a fashion model who went from traveling the world to Googling potential ailments that he may have on a daily basis. Now, Blake's twin brother, Chad, says enough is enough, and he refuses to support Blake's obsessive behavior. Let's hear from Chad. 
My brother Blake and I, we used to be best friends. We used to have that twin bond, and we don't anymore. I don't think you truly understand what you're putting our family through. I do understand what I'm putting our family through, but I feel like you guys aren't quite understanding how debilitating this is on me. Blake's obsessive behavior has 100% gotten in the way of our relationship. I'm exhausted at constantly having to reassure Blake that he does not have the disorders that he thinks he has. Why did you think you had leukemia? What was your symptom? I was at work and I was feeling really weak. Really weak? So you have leukemia for feeling weak? Blake's a real bad hypochondriac. Since Blake's symptoms came to life, he's very unmotivated. He's super depressed. He just has no life in him. It's really, really sad to see him like that because he's one of the most talented people I, I've ever met. Ever since he started modeling, that's kind of when this behavior started. I don't know if it's the pressure of getting his looks or his appearance perfect, but that's when the obsession started. I just look at Blake now like he's very weak-minded and he just doesn't have a strong bone in his body. I think you needing Reassurance 24-7 is very weak. I also think he just hasn't really figured out his life, and I feel like this compulsive behavior is his way of coping with it. He acts completely normal around other people. He's able to go to work every day as a server. His modeling agents love him. His managers love him. Everyone loves him. It's like he hides his schizophrenia thing at work, but then it all comes at home. It's bizarre. We're your family. We know you more than anyone. More than anyone. Okay, but how does that rule out me being schizophrenic then? Because you're not. I've tried to help Blake. I've tried to get him to go to the gym with me every morning. Every single time I hang out with my friends, I invite him just to get him out of the house, but he won't do it. I'm pretty confident if Blake's behavior doesn't change, we're not gonna have a relationship at all. Well, Chad, you're really frustrated with him. Yeah, I'm really angry, not gonna yeah. lie. What do you want him to do? I want him to be Blake again. I want him to be my twin again. I want him to feel normal. Yeah. He thinks his life is over. He thinks he has schizophrenia, and that's that. He mm -hmm. thinks there's there's no way out of it. Mm -hmm. like, it's so sad to see. Like, we used to do everything together. Two and a half years, you were just full of life. Played jokes on people. Always wanted to be around your friends. Traveled the world. You're full of life. And it's like, Somebody has sucked your soul from you, literally. Yeah, I just, and it's sucking he's just us so, dry. so lifeless, so lifeless. I don't have a sense of self. And I look in the mirror, and I don't really have a connection with myself in the mirror. And yeah, that must be really miserable to look at yourself terrifying. in the mirror. Well, cool. <laughs> I mean, you're both so handsome. I'm gonna slap you. <laughs> uh, Thank you. What's the funniest movie you've seen lately? I'm a model, so I love Zoolander. That cracks me yeah, up. Yeah, that's, that's definitely funny. Step Brothers. Step Brothers, yeah. Yeah. When was the last time you really laughed? Um, we laughed just a second ago. Yeah. 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 Okay. My girlfriend made me laugh this morning. Yeah, I, I said that there were some problems with your theory. You say there's no test for schizophrenia, but there are tests for it. There are things that really determine whether someone is schizophrenic even a little bit or a lot or whatever. And for example, one of those things is schizophrenics just really don't have a sense of humor. <laughs> they don't find anything funny. And they don't have the ability to speculate about whether or not they have schizophrenia, which you do. Mm. And they have an inability to distinguish between fantasy and reality. Mm -hmm. uh, and you do. I know there's been like a few times where I'll be at a bar and I'll look at like a glass of wine and I'll, in my head I'll visualize it being poisoned, even though I like know it's not and I, I would still drink it. But like I'd be like, why would I even get that thought? Is that is that schizophrenia even like is that schizophrenia mm -hmm. putting that thought in my head? I feel like you've like, just brainwashed yourself the past couple of years. Yeah, well, we're going to start working out of that because I have a pivotal question that is going to be your first step out of this quagmire right after the break. Kim says that she believes she's partially to blame for Blake's obsessive thoughts. She's not, but she is damn sure fueling the fire. And I'm gonna tell her how to stop doing that. And I've got a question that's gonna put him on the path when we come back. You've got to stop playing the game. He is addicted to you assuring him that he does not have what he thinks he has. Stop doing it. And later, your language is catastrophic. You say this is horrible. It's not horrible. You know, what's horrible is a child on the burn unit. That's horrible. 
You getting nervous on the way to work is not horrible. That's annoying. I myself have OCD and general anxiety disorder. I think there's a chance that my OCD brain definitely went to Blake. He inherited my brain. My anxiety has been a major problem. My mind always races. There's nothing that will slow down my brain. It's very similar to how Blake is. I've had many conversations with Blake about my OCD, how I just ignore the intrusive thoughts. I think that's what's so frustrating to me. It's like, if I can ignore the intrusive thoughts, why can't you? Well, Blake says he spends 10 hours a day Googling what could be wrong with his health. I, I've got this pivotal question for you in just a second, but let me talk to you two first. Well, let me just tell you, if, if you want him to be better, you need to stop right now reassuring him that he is not schizophrenic, not mentally ill, not suffering from debilitating OCD. You just have to stop reassuring him. Okay. Because every time you do that, it's like a drug addict getting a fix. His anxiety builds up, builds up, builds up, builds up, builds up. And then you go, no, 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 you're fine. You don't have it, you don't have it, you don't have it. He goes, oh. And it starts building up, build up, build up, build up, build up. And then you go, no, 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 let me reassure you, let me reassure you. So it builds up, builds up, he gets a fix. Builds up, builds up, gets a fix. Builds up, builds up, gets a fix. He is addicted to your reassuring him that he does not have what he thinks he has. Stop doing it. You are addicting him to your reassurance. You didn't give him your OCD tendencies, by the way. Is there a genetic component to it? Yeah, there's a genetic component to it, but that just determines who can be, not who will. So erase the guilt, don't okay. parent from guilt, don't reassure from guilt, don't buy into it. He is sucking you in to this delusional thinking. Okay. So you need to stop rewarding bad behavior. And if he just like, I just need you to tell me I don't have it. Sorry, maybe you do, I don't know. I'm not a professional. <laughs> Yeah. Stop paying them off. My brain won't like that. Pardon me? I said my brain will not like that. Yeah, well, that's all right. <laughs> okay, now, my pivotal question for you is, you think you have schizophrenia. Well, let's just talk that through. I do. So what if you do? Let's just play it out. I don't mind playing what if with somebody yeah. as long as we play it all the way out to the end. Yeah. So what do you have against schizophrenics? There's nothing I have against them. Well, apparently... You seriously don't want to be one. Well, I feel like it would it would impact my life being in and out of mental hospitals and it would shatter my mind. Like this for... isn't? Yeah. I mean, what you're doing is impacting your life, right? Yeah. It has you paralyzed, it has you withdrawn, it, it has your world shrinking up, you're totally dysfunctional, right? So why would that be any worse? At least you would have a name. Yeah, I think that has a lot to do with you that. You could describe it in one word instead of going through yeah. all of this. So what if you have schizophrenia? I would just feel like my life would never be the same. Have you ever heard that old saying, what I fear I create? I haven't. What I fear I create. You are creating the life that a schizophrenic would have in your head. You don't have schizophrenia, you've just decided to live the life of a schizophrenic. Okay, so what if you do have schizophrenia? So then you would have symptoms and you would have to take medication, then what? Then I would have to accept it and do the best to move on with my life. And that's a horrible outcome? That's what you're running scared from? I don't know why, I'm just so terrified of this, this disease. For some reason I have it in my mind that if I have schizophrenia, like I'll be in and out of mental hospitals, I might lose, I might lose my girlfriend, I might lose friendships. What I fear I create. Mm. How's your relationship with your brother right now? We're isolated, we're distant, you know? We used to do So that. you're creating exactly what you're afraid is going to happen if you have the disease. Yeah. You don't have the disease, you're just creating all the negatives if you did. If you had schizophrenia, they might happen, they might not. Mm. You're making sure they happen now by fearing that you have schizophrenia. No. I've been doing this for 45 years. I've worked with a lot of schizophrenics. I've seen, I've seen some of your videos. And ain't none of them as miserable as you shows. are. <laughs> <laughs> now Blake's girlfriend, Maxie, says she had no idea that he felt he had schizophrenia until he texted her one day by mistake. 
Uh, we'll talk to her next. Blake was living in Mexico for modeling and he texted me saying, would a 28 year old be developing schizophrenia? I was confused because I know what schizophrenia is and Blake is so far from having that. I've been with my girlfriend, Maxie, for a little over two years now. Maxie's become my go-to person I seek reassurance from and been to. First thing I do in the morning, I wake up and I tell Maxie how I'm feeling. Then when I'm off work, I call her and start venting and trying to ask for reassurance on why I'm not schizophrenic. I feel like I definitely opened Pandora's box because I'm constantly texting her the same things over and over again and I could see the stress it's putting on her. I don't know how she could be happy in a relationship like this because I feel like I'm just bringing her down with me. Well, I'm joined by Kim and her twin sons, Blake and Chad. Now, Kim and Chad say they're frustrated with Blake, who thinks he has schizophrenia, psychosis, thyroid cancer, lymphoma. Blake's girlfriend, Maxie, says she's also frustrated with him, and it's the same false beliefs that get in the way of their relationship. Blake and I have a healthy relationship, but with what Blake's going through, it can be hard sometimes. I first learned about Blake's issues by accident about a year ago. Blake was living in Mexico for modeling and he texted me saying, would a 28 year old be developing schizophrenia? The text was meant for his mom, but it went to me. I was confused because I know what schizophrenia is and Blake is so far from having that. Now schizophrenia is all we talk about. He would send me videos of people that have schizophrenia and he didn't exhibit any of the same behaviors that anyone in the videos had. Blake has never had any hallucinations and has never had any delusions, at least that I know of. I've seen Blake have maybe four or five panic attacks. A couple months ago, he was texting me that he was afraid he was slipping into a psychosis. He wanted to sign himself into a mental hospital. There are some days where I'm having a bad day and it won't get addressed because we're only talking about schizophrenia and how he feels. It can be very frustrating. How much time does he spend focused on this when he's with you? Um, some days are better than others. Um, there are days where this is all we talk about. We don't mm -hmm. talk about anything else besides that. What would happen if you just refuse to engage and just refuse to talk about it? I think he just gets really, like, in a really down mood. Okay, and then what happens? If I don't give him reassurance. I mean, I do give him reassurance because when I see him in such a low mood, it's hard not to. Y you understand why it's critically important that you not do that, mm -hmm. right? And he may get down, as you say, and yeah. he might have a panic attack or whatever, and, and, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. It's like the world's not gonna end. Yeah. You've had panic attacks, right? I have. Yeah. And what happens when you have a panic attack? I mean, it's hell for 20, 30 minutes, yeah. I'll break down, cry my eyes out. Then yeah. what happens? Then I go to work for seven hours. Yeah. And come home, yeah. and I'm usually more relaxed. So my point is, when you have a panic attack, you just, you can completely pass out, but the worst that's gonna happen is you're gonna wake up and go, oh. Yeah. Okay. I better get on to work. Mm -hmm. It's like the world doesn't come to an yeah. end, right? No, it's terrifying. Yeah. It's, I have no joy in me at all. There's power in language. And if I had your internal dialogue, I wouldn't be yucking it up much either. Your language is catastrophic. You say this is horrible. Mm -hmm. it, it's not horrible. What's horrible is a child on the burn unit. Yeah. That's horrible. You getting nervous on the way to work's not horrible. That's annoying. Yeah. Let's call things what they are. We sent uh, Blake to Dr. Charles Sophie. He is a very distinguished psychiatrist uh, to do some testing yesterday. Well, we have those results. We'll find out when we come back.
My doctor prescribed me uh, Abilify. I looked up Abilify and of course I saw it treats people with psychosis and schizophrenia. And you thought you had that too then? The biggest fear I have right now is schizophrenia. You're torturing yourself, you know that. That's what people are telling me, but I just... You can't stop it. I can't stop it. Yeah, it's ruining my life. Before we get back to today's program, I want to tell you about what we have coming up next Tuesday. Dina says her relationship with her 18-year-old daughter, Karina, has been tumultuous ever since her daughter was 13. But her once honor roll student with a college scholarship began rolling downhill when she brought her boyfriend, Tommy, home, and things went from bad to worse after a car incident. Take a look. Karina got in some legal trouble around the age of 17. I attribute a lot of my daughter's downward spiral to her boyfriend, Tommy. The thing that really infuriates me is that one night. dragged my daughter with his car. They were in an argument. Rena went to get out of the car and he took off. She split her head open. When I watch it, I see something horrific. Definitely time for her to grow up and dump Tommy. Dina's version of this is that Tommy pulled the car away and dragged Corinna with his car. Now, Corinna says, Tommy hit her with his car, but he did it by accident. So there's a real question here. Did he run her over because they were in a fight and he threw a huge rage? Or was this truly an accident? We have a video from a security camera and we're gonna break it down frame by frame and find out what's going on. That's next Tuesday. You do not wanna miss it. All right, let's get back to this family. We're here today with fashion model Blake, whose mom Kim, twin brother Chad, and girlfriend Maxie are concerned for his well-being after Blake became obsessed with having the symptoms of schizophrenia and a whole list of other disorders. Uh, Dr. Charles Sophie, a board-certified psychiatrist and a member of the Dr. Phil Advisory Board, agreed to see him and just do an evaluation. Take a look at what happened. So, how are you? I'm good, a little anxious right now. Why? I always get anxiety when I meet with psychiatrists because I always fear the worst. Are you currently in treatment of any sort? Yeah, I see an OCD uh, specialist in Arizona. And are you on medication? Clonopin, and I take it every day. Not good, it's a band -aid. I do know that, and it's like a safety thing. For, I always have to have a Clonopin on me. So other than this clonopin, you tried a couple antidepressants. Mm -hmm. Anything else? My doctor prescribed me a low dose of Abilify. I looked up Abilify, and of course, I saw it treats people with psychosis and schizophrenia, and that scared me to death. And you thought you had that too, then? The biggest fear I have right now is schizophrenia. Why? I was at a restaurant with my mom. I thought I heard like the quickest little whisper in my head say my name. I remember the first thing that came to my mind was schizophrenia. Once I got home, I started Googling symptoms. And ever since then, I've been so obsessed with it. One hallucination doesn't make a disease necessarily. I get songs just stuck in my head so easily. For me though, I'm like, I don't know, I just don't think that's normal. I feel this depersonalization, like it's with me like almost every day. You're torturing yourself, you know that. Yeah, that's, that's what people are telling me, but I just... You can't stop it. I can't stop it, yeah, it's, it's ruining my life. It is, it's really tough, but there is help for that. I read that smoking weed could cause schizophrenia, and I did smoke a lot in high school. Well, I can tell you don't have schizophrenia. I mean, I... Would you feel better if I told you you did? No. You sure? When you say I don't have it, it like almost brings like a sense of calmness in me. But you won't accept it, because you're going to keep questioning. But it's hard to sustain. But if you were watching this movie, what would you think? 
I would think the person sitting here is a big hypochondriac. So you're okay with us putting together a treatment plan? In my mind, it's my thought process is like, I'm still questioning if I'm being diagnosed right. We'll start with you getting some blood work, doing the DNA swab of your mouth, maybe talking to your therapist that you've been seeing. I'm open for all that, so I appreciate you so much. What was your takeaway from spending time with Blake? Blake thinks he's sicker than he is and he likes attention. And he likes to pull everybody's attention so that he gets taken care of instead of him taking care of himself. Mm -hmm. So you think he's kind of feeding off the reassurance? Yeah, I think he has to learn how to do it himself, to self-soothe yourself. That's three quarters of what's going on. Once you believe in you as much as they believe in you, you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. So you think he's schizophrenic? Not today. No, I don't think you are. I think you need to grow up emotionally a little bit. Would you like to know what I think the bottom line is? Would you like to know what I think the bottom line is? Yeah. Uh, I think you have a very dysfunctional internal dialogue. Mm -hmm. There is no reality, only perception. There's no good news or bad news, there's just news, and then we decide whether it's good or bad. So your problem, in my opinion, is sum and substance a function of your internal dialogue. You have just been telling yourself a very catastrophic monologue that has you terribly upset. And when you change that, your whole experience of life will change. Yes. Now, there is a whole field of psychology that believes what I just said, and it's called cognitive behavioral therapy. Mm -hmm. I don't think you need anything other than good ongoing cognitive behavioral therapy to change the conversation that you're having with yourself. And I think when you do that, you will say, I'm in charge of me, I'm changing what I'm telling myself, and I'm not telling you to be a rah-rah cheerleader, I'm just saying test what you say against reality. And if it passes a reality test, embrace it. If it doesn't, hit the eject button. And you have the power to change your experience of life. And I, I can help make that happen for you. Okay. Uh, and if you'll do it and really get good at it, you'll look back on this in a very short period of time and go, oh my God, there's a few months I can't get back. And this will be over with, not because somebody fixed it for you, but because you exercise mastery over your own life. The only person you control is you. The only person you need to control is you. Dr. Sophie, what do you say? We all have aches and pains, and we don't all think we have cancer. Yeah. But you go right there for some reason. Mm -hmm. Some of it is you get attention, and some of it is you're just fearful. You live your life in fear. And we talked about the instance when your dad died, yeah. and that whole time that you just emotionally clung to your mother. Mm -hmm. You've never let go out of fear. Mm -hmm. And so that's why she's your main reassurer. Yeah. So work through some of these things with the great tools of CBD. You'll be wonderful. Okay. But self-soothe yourself. Yeah. Yeah, we, we learn about ourselves by watching what we do. When you watch yourself master this and tone it down 20%, 20%, 20%, you'll go, wow, I did that. I have the power to control this. Yeah. Then you'll attribute to yourself the competency to control this. And this makes sense to you, I can tell. Yeah. Because as I'm talking about this, your eyes are getting brighter and mm -hmm. you're actually sitting up straighter. Mm -hmm. It's like, I like what I'm hearing here. This is something I can do. Yeah. And you're a competent guy, and you like hearing there's something you can do instead of depending on somebody else. Yes. Does this make sense to you? Yes, it does, 100%. Can you do this? I can do this. Will you do this? I will do this, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. All right, good deal. Okay, yeah. Now that I've given Blake the tools I believe he needs to live a happier and healthier life, I'm gonna do the same for you with important tips you can start using today. That's next. My next guest, Jenna, says, as a professional single woman, living a healthy and active lifestyle is really important to her. Now, she says she wants to always present herself well, and that starts, obviously, with a great smile. Take a look. I am a pharmaceutical sales rep. In my line of work, a smile is a key attraction when meeting with my customers. It can sometimes help me seal the deal in sales. I also believe health is wealth. Having a healthy smile is definitely a reflection of a healthy lifestyle. 
I love to smile. I feel that my smile is my best feature. I'm definitely a fanatic when it comes to my teeth, brushing them every morning and evening. I floss daily. I try to take the best care of them as I can. My grandma has always stressed to me the importance of taking great care of my teeth to avoid getting dentures down the road like she had to. My plan is to look and feel young as I age. Brushing my teeth is serious business. I have been using a manual toothbrush all of my life. I feel a little burned out with my oral hygiene routine, and I would be open to trying a new alternative. I definitely want to take my dental health to a new level to keep my smile bright, white, and refreshed. All right, well, Jenna is joining me along with clinical dental hygienist Deborah Carrier, spokesperson for Oral B. So, welcome, guys. <laughs> you said health as well. So, what does that mean to you? Well, Dr. Phil, what that means to me is having good health is simply priceless. There's no amount of money you can spend to get good health. So it really just comes down to taking good care of your body and your mind to your best ability. How I personally maintain this is by exercising five days a week. I also eat a healthy diet. However, I will say that I'm always looking for ways to improve my health routine. Well, it does sound like you prioritize your healthy lifestyle. Do you ever take time to relax, chill out, slow down? Between my work schedule, you know, exercising, spending time with family, and taking care of my dog, Charlie, there's really just not enough hours in my day. That's one of the key elements to really having an overall homeostasis, a balance in your body. And what people don't realize is really small changes add up across time. And even if you take 10 or 15 minutes to relax, that can last for eight hours throughout your day. Small changes aggregate into big results. So if you'll take even five minutes, 10 minutes, a couple of times during the day to either kind of meditate or learn a relaxation exercise makes a huge, huge difference. Is that something you could do? You know, that's something I struggle with. However, I will say, Dr. Phil, that I strive to have balance in my life. So prioritizing is something I'm always working on. Yeah, even if you get up a few minutes early in the morning and, and carve out time for yourself. Uh, I know staying healthy is really important to you. Uh, and Deborah, I believe you have a suggestion for Jenna. I do, Dr. Phil. Jenna, you already practice what you preach, but a good way for you to round out your healthy lifestyle is to start and end each day with good oral hygiene. Um, now, we heard that you always used a, a manual toothbrush, and when you think about a healthy lifestyle, you know, your toothbrush is probably not the first thing to cross your mind, um, but using an electric toothbrush is much better for your oral care than a, a manual toothbrush because it cleans your teeth better. So a few days ago, we sent you an Oral-B Genius rechargeable toothbrush. Did you try it? Yes, I did, Deborah, and I have to say that I was amazed at how clean my gums and my teeth both felt just on the first try. That's because the round brush head cups and surrounds each tooth to remove up to 100% more plaque than a manual toothbrush. The built-in pressure sensor ensures that your brushing is gentle on your gums. You can also stay on track with the personalized coaching with their downloadable app. So are you impressed with it enough that you would Toss the manual toothbrush for good? Yes, Dr. Phil, you'll be happy to know that when I return back to Ohio, I will be tossing my manual toothbrush. <laughs> my teeth look and feel so much cleaner since I switched to the Oral-B electric toothbrush. And my very favorite part is it actually lets me know when I've brushed for a full two minutes. Yeah, this is really easy for me because I use this, so it's a big deal. And Deborah, you have a, a gift for Jenna, right? I do, Jenna. So you can keep up with your new oral care routine. We're going to give you a $100 gift card from oh, Costco because that's where Oral-B products are available. Thank you. Right. <laughs> All right. Look, good oral hygiene is really an investment in your overall health and well-being. And audience, Oral-B wants you to be healthy as well. So you're also going home with a $100 Costco gift card. All right, how about that? I want to thank all of my guests today and a special thanks to Deborah Carrier, thank, thank you so you. much. I'd also like to thank Dr. Charles Sophie, Los Angeles-based psychiatrist and medical director for the County of Los Angeles Department of Children and Family Services. I receive so many questions on social media about our guests or the topics we discuss, but sometimes you ask about me and my life. For example, Lisa Maria Longo asked on Facebook, do you have any hobbies? 
Well, actually I do. I play tennis probably, what, Robin, 300 days a year? Every day, yes. Yeah. Um, every day. Every day. I do it at home, I do it in charity events and all. Uh, here's, a, here's an example. Yeah, this is a really fun thing we did playing at uh, Chris Everett's charity event down in Florida. It's the Raymond James Pro Celebrity Classic. And uh, they raise money to help at-risk families throughout Florida. So uh, we had a good time playing in, uh, uh, playing in this tournament. Uh, listen, I really enjoy reading all of your uh, comments and questions on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, so keep them coming. I just might read yours right here on stage. We'll see you next time, thanks.